this video, I wanted to do a short introduction about security in FileMaker and FM Starting Point. Now for the moment, let's assume that you've taken your copy of FM Starting Point and gone ahead and had it hosted on a copy of FileMaker server. In this case, we have a copy of FM Starting Point here. It's being hosted on a dedicated FileMaker server here on my local area network. Now, of course, as you start out with FM Starting Point, you're going to have a local copy of this database file. But as you want to start sharing the database and collaborating with others, you're going to want to start thinking about security. When you first get a copy of FM Starting Point, the security is set to be unlocked. And what I mean by that is I'm going to go up under File, down to Manage, over to Security, and I'm going to see the Manage Security dialog for FM Starting Point. Now this is applicable to any FileMaker database. Now I can see that there is a guest account right here, but it's not active. And there's an admin account right here that is active. But the admin account is set for no password. And FileMaker is set to automatically log on to the admin account with no password. So actually there is security set up in the file, but it logs onto it automatically. So you never actually see it occur. So I'm going to say OK right here. I'm going to go to File, down to File Options, and you can see right here that FileMaker is going to attempt to log on automatically with admin, no password. That's how FileMaker logs on automatically, and you never see it asking for an access code. Now, if we put the database up on a FileMaker server and we leave it like this, anyone on the internet can get into your copy of FM Starting Point without any password at all. And this isn't so good. So you can leave this alone. This isn't really a secret. I'm going to go ahead and hit Cancel. I'm going to go back to File. I'm going to say Manage. I'm going to go to the Security. And I'm going to go ahead and go to Admin. And I can see right here I have no password. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a password. Now it's important that we keep the privilege set as full access. This means we have complete and full access to every part of the database. It's important that at least one account in the database has administrative full access. Otherwise, we're going to end up permanently locking ourselves out of the database. Now if I go ahead and exit the screen right here, FileMaker is going to confirm that I remember what the new administrative code is. So I have to go ahead and enter the new master administrative access code and select OK. Now every time I close and reopen the file, I'm going to go ahead and go to File, down to Open Recent, and here we go. Now of course the system is going to default to the machine name that I have on the computer, which is Richard Carlton, but I know that the administrative access starts with admin and it's going to use the password that I just set up. I have an option of checking off right here that I want to save this permanently as part of my keychain. Now I've got basic level security in my database. Now to give you a quick brain dump on what you can do with security here is that you can add other users to your security system. Let's say that we have Tom and Tom's password is going to be test for something very simple. But we don't want Tom to have full access to the database. Let's just say that Tom has data entry only. So he can read all the data, he can write all the data, he can even delete records if he wants, but he can't get in and define new fields and mess with scripts and change layouts. FileMaker has preset that up right here as the data entry only privilege set. That's a pretty handy pre-built privilege set. So as you allow your collaborative team to access your database, it's strongly recommended that you don't allow them to share the same password. Each person is going to have their own username and password. They might even have a custom privilege set where they're only allowed to see certain layouts or certain records. We could restrict them to a certain layouts or certain regions of information. If they're a sales rep and maybe they're only supposed to see the western part of the United States, we could restrict them to only see records from the western part of the US. Anything is possible with this security system. It's very flexible. In this case, I'm just going to say Stacy is data entry only as well. 
and I can add one more. Password. And let's say that Phil is a very sketchy individual. We don't trust Phil so much. Maybe he's just a temp that comes in and uh, fills in for us a little bit. He needs to only be able to read information out of FileMaker, but we don't want him to actually edit anything. So we give him read-only access, and we say, OK. Now something else to consider as you're setting up your users to use a shared copy of FM Starting Point. Each user should have their own machine name set up in their copy of FM Starting Point. And this is what I mean. Down here at the bottom, you can see that this record was modified by Richard Carlton. But actually, down here in the lower left, it was created by one of my administrative assistants, Rachel. How do we set that up? Under FileMaker, up here under Preferences, and this is located in a slightly different spot under Windows, you can select Preferences here, and you can look to see the name of the machine. So as I create new records, this will be the name that's used. This is the default name right here, and this name is gotten from the operating system. But a lot of times, if you're on a machine at a corporate office somewhere, this will be some sort of cryptic number, E3151 Tango Blue Beaver, something crazy. And so you'll actually want to put in here, so we actually have a clue who this is. We say, OK. So then, as we create new records in the system, the system actually logs in the fact that Fred Smith actually created the new record. Now this preference setting right here actually has nothing to do with the built-in security that's over here. Just keep that in mind. Now through some clever scripting you can tie the two together but by default these two areas are not attached. So keep in mind that the two rules you want to follow in a collaborative environment is that one, everyone has their own account with a unique username and password and two, everyone is going to have a unique username right here. Now let me show this to you real quick on the iPad. So here we are, we're logged in to FM Starting Point on the iPad. Now if I click up here, I can see right here that I have various preference settings right here. I can click settings right here. And up here in the upper right hand corner, I can see the username right here. And initially, this iPad was called Richard's iPad, which was less than fully optimal because you could have lots of Richards in your company. In this case, this iPad really isn't even mine. It's one that's assigned to one of my offices. It's a loose iPad that people borrow. It's not even specifically assigned to an individual. So I simply said it's the Santa Clara Office Mini. Maybe it's even the iPad Mini. So then, as I go over here to Contacts, and I click Add a New Record, and I simply click out and commit the record, click down here, you can see that the record was created right here. Hopefully that gives you some ideas about basic security setup and basic machine naming setup for each user who's going to collaborate with your copy of FM Starting Point or for that matter with any FileMaker database.